Hi there, I'm Penny Hunt and this is Penny Heart to Heart. And I wanted to just jump in here today for a few minutes and talk to you about my writing that I posted this week called, When Was the Last Time You Made a New Friend? Well, when was the last time you made a new friend? I started thinking about friends this week and I have been so fortunate to have really great friends in my life. And I started to think about what um, causes friendship. How do you create friendship? How do friends come and go from your life? And what is our responsibility? Are we or should we be trying to make new friends all the time? Or what is the role of friendship in your life? And so that's why I wrote this writing. And when I did it, I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I asked people what their definition of friendship is. So I asked, I started going strategically through ages, starting with the six-year-old and going all the way up to the oldest was 87 that I posed the question to, what is your definition of a friend? And it was very interesting to see the different ages and their different reactions. Um, the youngest one said, somebody who's nice, that's a friend. Um, and then it went on to 17 year old who's active in sports and quite quickly said, a friend is someone who is loyal to you. And I thought that maybe comes from his interaction with his sports teams. And so the answers came differently with a common thread of a lot of um, attributes of a friend, but they came differently. And it was interesting to see the progression of age and how different ages felt about friends and friendship. I think for me, a friend is someone who I can trust, someone trust is big with me, someone who supports me and I can support them and I trust them and they trust me. And someone that I described that I could call, the one I would think about that I would call at two o'clock in the morning if I had good news or bad news. I have a circle of friends and we call each other 2 a.m. friends because we know that about each other. We know that we can call anytime, day or night, even if it's two o'clock in the morning. And if we need something or just have something that is so fabulous that we have to share right then that we can call at um, 2 a.m. I have had to make that, make that phone call before um, when things have happened in my life and I needed help or needed to share um, unfortunate news. And I've also received, I've been on the receiving end of those phone calls. And it's an honor to be the one that receives that phone call. That phone call when your friend is in trouble or needs help or something has happened that is devastating to them, that you are the one they choose as the friend that they call. I think it is also an honor um, when you make that phone call, you're choosing someone that, uh, that you honor in your heart. So I, I thought about a lot of things about friendship when I wrote that. And I wondered because I have had an interesting life. I've mentioned many times that I grew up in a military family. So we moved around a few times and you learn as a child when you move how to make new friends. Even if as a child you move to a different part of your community and you go to a different school, you can't jump in your car and drive over and see your friends. So your friendship might change because you've just moved across town. For me, it was moving across the country to different states and being plunked into a new school and new community of friendships. And um, I always say I learned at a very young age how to make friends on the playground or stand alone. And so I know how to communicate with people. I know how to relate to people. At least I hope I do. I know how to build friendships. And I learned that at a very young age. I think so many things can change friendships as you get older and go off to college. Sometimes you leave your high school buddies and you go to a different college and you become, you create new friendships at that college. Or if you marry someone and they have a new circle of friends and you kind of share friends. So you build friendships in a different way um, in that way. I remember making friends 
when my kids were babies and I had a, a couple neighbors that we were lucky enough that we stayed home with our babies when they were very young and we would have coffee and our babies would play on the floor next to us and it was a great friendship. As my children grew and I sat on the bleachers during soccer games and baseball games, I became friends with the other moms and the other parents of the um, kids that played on the teams with my children and those became great friendships. And I've had jobs where coworkers have become really um, soul connections for me and great friends that I've kept over the years. I think if you're fortunate enough to have a friend that you can remember from childhood, that you can still connect with, I have one I would say is my oldest friend in life, the oldest, not old age-wise, but the longest time frame that I've had a friend. And I love her, love her heart. We don't talk often, but when we do, I can pick up the phone and talk to her like we have never missed a day of talking. And we just um, chat away like we still live next door to each other. And when I see her occasionally, it's the same way. So it's a true heart connection that I feel like I will have um, for the rest of my life with her. And she is um, the longest friendship that I can remember and think of in my life because we were little, little girls together. So if you're fortunate enough to have that or if you are someone who has lived in the same community your whole life and gone to high school and graduated and you have that close-knit connection of high school friends or junior high friends that have always been there and what a great thing that would be to have that kind of group of friends. I also think that friendships change and morph and they may stagnate and um, sometimes disintegrate for different reasons. I think divorce, not only do you divide property and assets and things like that, but many times friends are divided in a divorce, which is an unfortunate situation, but it's kind of a fact of life. I've also noticed the older that I get and watching my parents age that sometimes you outlive your friends and um, so you can lose a friendship through um, their passing and I have lost a very dear friend, actually more than one friend in my lifetime and that's a painful path to walk when you lose a friendship in that way that you outlive them and all of a sudden that friendship has um, gone with them because they're not there anymore. I also think another thing that happens as we age is sometimes it might not be a death of a friend, but they have an illness, either mentally or physically. They cannot participate any longer in a friendship. And that is very heartbreaking and a sad situation to watch. I've seen that in some people that I love that have um, aged and either them, themselves, can't, don't have the capacity to be in a friendship the way they used to or they've lost their friends to that, that um, they are still healthy and could participate but their friend is not. And again, another very sad situation and path to walk for friendship. So then I started to wonder, taking all of that into consideration, how we um, go through life building friendships and they come and go and ebb and flow. And are we, as we age, should we be trying continually to build new friendships? Or do we have enough? And is it a natural progression to have by the time you reach a certain age to have these are my closest friends and that's it and then as they pass or you become ill or whatever the circumstance is um, your friendship circle becomes smaller or at 99 are, should we still be creating new friendships it's an interesting concept to think about and I can't answer that for you I think you have to look at your own life Look at the circle of friends. And I think I wrote about this in there that we confuse friendship sometimes with acquaintance. I know many people 
I know a lot of people and a lot of them are um, maybe people that have heard me speak and I've chatted with for a brief period or a, an acquaintance that I've met once or twice and then there is friends that I would call, I have this group of friends, and then I have my close friends, which is a very small circle of people that I would feel like I could trust or confide in, people that I would call at two o'clock in the morning, people that are so such deep friends that they are my um, soul connections. And so when you think about what, how do you define a friend, I think sometimes in this fast paced world that we live in right now, that sometimes friends are defined by a thumbs up on social media, a blue thumbs up on social media. And does that cartoon thumb really represent a friend? Or is that really in our mind that if we, the more thumbs up we have, the more friends we think we have? Is that just an acknowledgement of us? Um, a self-acknowledgement that, boy, I have a lot of friends. Or are they really friends? Are they just acquaintances? Even on social media sometimes, they might be a friend of a friend and somehow we get connected with them on our social media outlets. And we maybe don't even know them. But because they've liked our page or given us that blue thumbs up, we consider them a friend. And so... My writing really poses a lot of questions for you to think about. For you to think about how you define a friend and friendship. For you to think about who are your friends and what makes them your friend. And for you to think about, do you need to be continually making an effort to make more friends? Or does friendship happen I like serendipity, like you can't create a best friend. It just kind of happens that way. How does this all work? So I am giving you a lot of questions to think about. I would love to hear the answers and what you come up with. Um, you can, if you haven't read the writing, the link is always with this video. So I encourage you to read it. There's always audio so you can listen to it. And please let me know what you think. I would love to hear your definition of friendship and what it means to be a friend. I would love to hear what you think about the progression of friendship and how you see it playing out in your life and what you think we should do as we age and how that works. I would love to hear your thoughts on being a friend, having friends, the world of friendship and what you think about that. I am so pleased that you took a few minutes to watch this today. I wish you a glorious afternoon. This has been Penny Heart to Heart. I'm Penny Hunt, and thanks for watching.